What is going on, guys? Algeria have done it. I, I called. I called this. I said this Algerian squad would at least make it to the quarterfinals, and they did it in, in a very convincing fashion. Absolutely destroying this Guinea squad uh, in what was a, a, a not not really close matchup. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, Algeria with everything that they've done in this contest, with all the talent that they had in beating Senegal as well, uh, they they have a lot still yet to prove. I, I mean. Winning, winning all the games in the group stage is a very good thing, but unless you do it in the knockout rounds, uh, then you're going to end up like Morocco, losing in the round of 16 uh, to Benin. So Algeria came into this game, had to stay focused, had to, had to keep discipline. Um, and, and something a little surprising in this game, I guess, that got me was uh, this, this Guinea squad, they, they were not prepared to go down lightly. Uh, they were prepared to, you know... Control possession, can try to control the style of play, uh, trying to take you know the attacking talents, uh, Boneja, Riyad Mahrez, uh, Benasser, Sofia Faguli, trying to take these guys out of the game uh, in any shape or, or form that they can, uh, and, and it just it, uh, didn't work. It just didn't work, uh, and it, I I do feel bad for for how you know this sort of game progressed because Guinea got a lot of good shots up. Uh, it's just. They just weren't on target. They just they were just weren't you know that they, they couldn't complete uh, what was the the better of of the shots or the higher quality shot opportunities. Although Algeria themselves converted some very very tough tough angles on the shots. The Benasser goal uh, was absolutely fantastic. Him him in the one touch with, with Buneja, which by the way this this is my. I mean, this isn't the first time I've watched Algeria, but Bunesia specifically. I haven't really heard a lot from him in terms of clubs. I don't know what club he plays for. I, I need to do my research on that. But the guy is a striker and a half. I mean, he can, he can you know, play with his back to goal. He can play in between defenders. He can make runs. He actually is very, very accurate, uh, which is... is Kind of surprising, but yet it feels so smooth watching it. Uh, just watching him sort of play, watching him work around uh, essentially what is an attacking four. I mean, that entire four of the front line for, for this Algeria squad is meant to go forward and attack. It's essentially a split uh, because Algeria play this 4-1-4-1 style, uh, which doesn't really mold into a 4-3-3 or anything like that. They, they sit solid 4-1-4-1. Uh, it kind of splits the field in two rather than, you know, you get your traditional threes of mid field attack and defense there's literally defense and attack and Buneja is the head of that attack the spearhead he's meant to you know do all of these different things he did so so good in the group stages and in this game he didn't get he didn't get a goal but he got a great assist for the first goal we had Mares getting getting a it, who, who would have guessed a left footed shot uh, for the second goal and then the third goal Adam Unas coming in as a substitute I think I hope I said that right Unas Unas uh, coming in as a substitute getting the third goal completely putting Guinea to bed in this game um, and I do feel for them I do feel for the way that this game sort of went uh, it everything went in Algeria's favor especially the attacking opportunities because pretty much every single step of the way uh, they they were ready to go I mean Algeria every single you know attacker was ready on point I, I actually want to say my, my man of the match is still Bonesia uh, in terms of the attacking side. Ben Asser was very good as well, tracking back. Um, Youssef Atal, that guy is so quick. I know you guys were telling me about him after the Senegal game because you guys rate him so highly. I hope I'm saying that right as well. Is it Atal? Uh, but that full, but I, I understand now why he runs so well with Riyad Mahrez on that right wing. That's because A, the dude is just fast. He's fast. He's very accurate. The, the crosses that he plays as well and the through balls that he play are shockingly on point, especially for, for a player, you know, who hasn't really been completely noticed at the club level yet. Um, I, this game was a great showing. If you haven't, go watch some of the highlights from this game. Go watch specifically that right back position because him and Mahrez is interchanging uh, it, along that right side. He, it works so well because Mahrez, you know, likes to cut to his left, likes to eventually make a move to his left, uh, and, and Atal always runs the overlap. He always runs down that right flank. He's always available for a cross, and he he was excellent in getting that third goal together uh, for this Algeria squad as well as breaking on the counter, um, which is. As much as I want to say, you know, the, a lot of the good teams so far, this AFCON, uh, they, they've stayed 
you know, grounded in their principles. So a good example is is the Ivory Coast knowing that the defense is not good. Uh, so they, you know, they sit and they counter because they know they have speed, they know they have a ton of skill and talent, and they know that they can kill you if they just get a couple opportunities. And that was Algeria in this game. They sat, they waited for their own opportunities, they took them when they mattered. Uh, had Bunesia not been offside for two of those, it would have been 5 nothing, And he would have had an amazing game overall. Although they still did have a very, very fantastic uh, game in general. The squad was very, very good for, for what it was worth. And a 3 nothing victory uh, pretty much sums up, you know, how good this Algeria squad can reach because now they're going to go on uh, to, to play in what will be a very, very tough uh, quarterfinal against Madagascar uh, at the African Cup of Nations. I said this Algeria squad would at least make the quarterfinals. Now I want to see if they're going to make the semis because Madagascar played so, so well against Congo. It's going to be difficult to see how, how, or not to see how Algeria could do it because Algeria could win this whole thing if they, you know, were up for it. Um, but, you know, how they're going to, you know, get get the same game plan essentially and work it the same way to where they can easily coast like they did in this contest but that that is just my thoughts my reaction to the Algeria contest against Guinea in the round of 16 they win three to nothing in absolutely dominant fashion in the Africa Cup of Nations uh, the round of 16 continues tomorrow I believe it's the last two games tomorrow uh, to decide the quarterfinals and then you know then we're back to the regular scheduled football program so uh, as well guys I think my, my, well I don't think my birthday is tomorrow so I may spend just a little bit of time away uh, we're actually gonna have you know resume normal duties with the videos We'll have some videos with some footage and stuff like that, you know, maybe the best of the group stages from AFCON, uh, the Women's World Cup just finished, so we'll do some stuff on that as well. Uh, Copa America, Gold Cup, they're all finishing up. So you guys know, let me know uh, what, you know, players or, or, you know, moments you guys would like to see uh, me react to. Because I've tried to catch a lot of football, but there are maybe some things that I miss. <coughs> so you guys need to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And peace.